what? Oh, oh no, I've reached my magnification limit. <laughs> Lily the lab techie. Lily the lab tech girl. Lily, 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 Lily,
Jimmy, why do you ask questions you already know the answer to? Regardless, I'll show you. Scanning electron microscopy works by collimating a beam of electrons towards the surface of a conducting material at a known energy. These electrons can be absorbed or backscattered by the surface. Backscattered electrons are electrons from the source that have an elastic collision off the surface of the material and can be detected. The absorbed electrons cause secondary electrons from the outer layer of the material to become dislodged and move towards the detector. This provides imaging information as well as el elemental analysis of the surface. These machines are so advanced that they can achieve a resolution greater than one nanometer. Really the only thing limiting them is the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons. So basically they are what I would call perfect. And this is why I'd like to order an SEM. But professor, I don't think you understand the advantages that the helium ion microscope provides. Yeah, like with the helium ion microscope, you don't need to have a conductive surface on your material. Well, it's not very hard to, well, um, uh. And with a helium ion microscope, we can use it for samples that are more sensitive that would be typically destroyed by the scanning electron microscope because it uses less energy. I suppose. And with the helium ion microscope, you get even better resolution than with the scanning electron microscope. Whoa, how is that even possible? As you said, Professor, the only thing limiting the scanning electron microscope resolution is the de Broglie wavelength. Uh, the de Broglie wavelength equals Planck's constant divided by mass times velocity. The wavelength is in meters, while the mass is, of course, in kilograms, velocity in meters per second, and Planck's constant in joules per hertz. Now, looking at the equation, there's only two ways to make the wavelength smaller. One way is to increase, increase the velocity of the electron. But if we did that, that would also increase the energy because E equals one half mv squared. And with a higher energy, there's a greater chance the sample could be destroyed by the electron. So the only other option is to increase the mass. So a helium ion weighs much more than an individual electron. And thus, it'll have a sm much smaller wavelength, leading to much better resolution. Whoa, I didn't realize you knew so much. But wouldn't the energy increase also if the mass increased because E equals one half mv squared? Well, of course it will increase, but take a look at the equation. Half mv squared, mass is only a factor of one, while the velocity changes exponentially. This means that if the energy of a system were the same, the helium ion would have a much smaller wavelength than compared to a system with electrons. Well, I guess you're right. A helium ion microscope would allow you to obtain a much higher resolution than a scanning electron microscope. Exactly. And we could use it to examine the collagen fibers of my mice. I guess you're right. I'm going to order one today. Thanks, Professor X. Well, it's been a busy day. I think I'm going to head home, Jimmy. Thanks, Lily. You're the best. Yeah, no problem. See you tomorrow. Oh, finally, I can see on the nanoscale. <laughs>